Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today we're completing intelligence from Hack the Box. I'm doing this machine because I'm going through the Pen 300 from Offensive Security and there is an Active Directory component to this exam and I know that this is the same for the OSCP as well. So learning this box is going to teach us Active Directory and also how to enumerate it, how to interact with it. And the best part is we'll be interacting with Active Directory 100% from Kali, not from a Windows box. So this is a nice skill to know. Otherwise, if you're interested in this, follow along. We have 10, 10, 10, 248 is our IP address. So the first thing that I like to do right away is go to my Kali and just run an Nmap. This will just go after the top 1000 ports. And as you can see, it's finding ports like 53. This looks like a Windows Active Directory machine uh, with LDAP running on 88. But it's weird that it's also running a website. People don't usually run websites on their domain controllers. But hey, this is CTF. So we'll go and visit this IP address here to see if we can find something on the website while Nmap is running. So coming to the website here, we see that it's just a normal website. What I like to do is here is we can view the page source or maybe go to contact us page if it works. It's just asking us for an email address. Most of the time you can check for injections here, but there is nothing there. Uh, announcement document, you can open that. Let's open in a new tab. And I saw that it's almost loading a JavaScript in the background. So right click again, another one. And if we view the page source. So it looks like, yes, the documents are specified in the page source here. There's two of them. This one here, document, then the, it's a PDF. Okay, so looking at the documents, they look like, it looks like they just have some default text in them, but it's interesting that they are there. Uh, if you look, they, you go to the documents folder, and then they are named by, looks like upload date, and then upload.pdf. So we can brute force this website for any other page, any other files that might not be hard coded to the page in this case. So to do that is we just need to write a script that goes and checks for dates around 2020 in this time. So I was starting 2019, maybe go all 2020 and 2021 to see if you find any other documents that might be there. So over the three years and you can brute force this very easily using any tools that you like, but I have a simple Python script here. And our end map is done. We'll come back to it if we need to. So here I already have a Python script called checkpdf.py. Let's let's check it out. So it's a simple Python script. You, you can write a bash script. I think people can even write a one liner here, bash one liner that works. But I'm just importing request. Then we check the URL for status code of 200. And this is what is our base. And we just like to append here the date in this format, then dash upload.pdf. And here we will be just injecting the dates between 2019 and 2021 in this format, year, like that, month, and day. And that's what this Python script is doing. And then it will tell us if it finds any uh, PDFs or not. So we can say uh, Python 3, check pdf.py. Okay, so running Python 3 check pdf.py, it will hang here for a second and then it will print out all the PDFs that it finds on the screen. All right, as you can see, there is a few documents he here. So what we can do is modify that script so that we download all those documents. Okay, so I modified the script and named it get pdf.py, get pdf.py. It's the same exact script that I was checking earlier, but this time we just added a download function to say, hey, if you see the status code of 200, go ahead and download the file. So that's what we did here. And after that, we say Python 3, get pdf.py, and this will download all the PDFs that we have. Since I already ran it, here they are. All the PDFs have been downloaded. So what we need to do now is let's just check one of them. Most likely they have a bunch of gibberish, but let's get one. Is it PDF? 
Right, so it looks like we have a bunch of text in there. Not too in interesting. Well, I guess they, there is some, but we can use other two PDF uh, openers as well. So next is maybe let's try to see if we can use XFIL, XIF2. Okay, so we can say XIF2, can you tell me information about this? Because if these, these PDF files are created by people, most people's uh, names will be there, like the creator will be Willie.Lee. So if every PDF has this syntax, we should then be able to get a user list from all these PDFs. And to get a user list, we just ran, hey, exif2, uh, can you create users like that? So we said, hey, run against every file that's in here and grab the word creator and save that to users. If you get users dot text, you notice that the users look like this. That's not clean. So what we want is we need to get a, a clean list of users where we remove the word creator that you saw here. So there's creator then the user. We just want the username. So let's fix that using some bash here, so cat that file, then we'll awk and separate it by the semicolon, remove the space, we'll cut the word creator out and print all the users just and put them in clean users.txt. So if we cat clean users.txt, that's what we end up. Just some cleaning up of things. There's probably duplicates here, but I don't care that much. I don't have that much that many users. So, so what I would do next is I'll try to see if I can also find the word password in the PDFs, in all the PDFs. Remember, we, we have a ton of PDFs. So from each PDF, we need to be able to go and see if we can uh, read the PDF and be able to tell if there's any anything that's interesting. So we're using a for loop here. So for file in anything that ends with your PDF, we want to use PDF to text, which will read the PDF stuff. Then we, I use these switches here, I found them online. Say, hey, let's let, let's read everything in there and find the word password. But I, when I found the word password, I wanted to see the eight lines before and after to make sure that they work. So that's what this is doing here. It's giving me the eight lines above the word password and below. Then uh, let's see if that works. Okay, so running it, as you can see, I get the welcome to account guide. That's why I like to print it, to print a bunch of words around it. So this is the default password for us. So we need to document that as one of the default passwords. So usually companies will have a canned default password like this that they give to every user. Some people change it if they are forced in the domain to change the password. Sometimes people, most people don't if you don't force them. So because of that, we are going to password spray i mean we're going to <laughs> we're going to try to brute force and share this user with every user that we found in users.txt we're going to see if they can sign in so to do that we use crackmap exec and the way that this is working is crackmap exec is using smb for all the users that are in my clean users.txt passing them the password one at a time and see if any, any of them will actually work so let's check it out here so when it says failure, that means that the user, the password didn't work for that user. So this is how you can try to see if you can check for valid passwords. So you do this for things like summer 2023 or things like th that you think people might be using as passwords. And the good thing is we're only checking once. So this is not a problem. The very last user here is Tiffany. And as you can see, Tiffany matched. So Tiffany is still using the old password using smb map here with tiffany what notice that we're, what we're doing here we're saying hey let's pass the user tiffany uh with password and uh the domain see if we can see any shares on these systems if we see a list of shares like this then we know that the password works and it's interesting here you don't see it and users this is <laughs> a big no-no and we have read only in it and users so let's see if we can sign in there smb client with intelligence for the user tiffany let's show you 
and then the password that we need is going to be this password and we're in so if we do a dir in this time i'm in it so i'll, I'll download that file it's called down detector so i'll say get down detector the ps1 then let's exit and also go in the users because tiffany can get to the users as well so let's replace it with users and pass tiffany's password and there. so we see a bunch of other users here here's desktop.ini i'm sure that administrator we cannot read anything so let's go to our own home directory and in here <laughs> we can actually browse so let's go to desktop okay so let's get to use the text to our machine or can we read it okay so type is not there so we cannot do that from smb all right Otherwise, if you check the other ones, we don't have access. So we have now, now we can get user.txt. And we should, that should be correct. Um, that, that wasn't hard. So submit that. All right, so they accepted it. So now that we know that we have Tiffany and the user works, let's, let's see if we can uh, do a quick bloodhound here. Let's run bloodhound with those credentials on the machine and see if we can actually uh, get useful information because that's the part that I'm interested in. So the syntax for Bloodhound is we're using Bloodhound, Bloodhound Python. You can install that. They use a Tiffany, give it the password and the domain controller that we want to go after and then the name server 10, 10, 10. So let's see. Um, okay, that's, that's a big mistake. I shouldn't have done that because Bloodhound will mess with, would download a bunch of files but that's okay so it finished let's go to my blood out here i already launched it and uh we need to upload and going here we just grab every single file that's in here let's open so we're importing the data in blood out our main goal here is to see if we can uh, find out if our user, Tiffany, has any anything that can help us. So first thing that I like to do is uh, let's check for Tiffany. Mark Tiffany as pond or owned. So Bloodhound is a tool that we can use to see any relationships in Active Directory. So here, let me just do the easy one from shortest path from owned principles and we have my tiffany nothing so we can try to find at least all cable so accounts and things like that but i didn't find anything here back here we also downloaded another file called down ps1 so let's check it out down ps1 yeah so reading through this uh you can tell that this is a script that's checking for a DNS record that includes the word web. And then if it finds a DNS record that includes the word web, it's going to send an email to Ted Graves and say, hey, um, that site is, is on. So they're checking for DNS records. And if this site is available, it will send a message. So for whatever reason, that's what we have. Uh, I tried to email Ted <laughs> to see if you click on my emails that is not the way here but then after a little bit of research i found out that we can generate a record here call it web something and then if they if if it matches this will email ted but instead of emailing ted we'll have it reach out to us so i'll create a record that's defining on my machine and then i'll uh, have respond and listen to it so here's what I used. So if you need a repo that will help you with that task where you can create DNS records from a Kali Linux machine, this is it. And it will tell you here like um, for abusing Kebros requires impacket LDAP. So make sure that you install all the requirements. Let's go ahead and see if we can create a record. 
Okay, so using DNS two pi on the domain, this is just the syntax for using that two. I'm creating a new domain called Web IT Security Lab. That's the domain name that I want. And then I'm saying, hey, reach out to me on my Kali Linux machine and also uh, the IP address of the machine that I want to create the domain on. So let's, um, okay, so for starters, we need to clone this or let's check if we have DNS2.py already. So locate DNS2.py. We should have one. All right, I already have it in here, so I'll go to that directory. Okay, so I, once I get in that directory, I'll run this tool here. Say, hey, let's go to that machine, but it's going to call back to my Kali Linux machine here, and I'm specifying the IP address. After this, you once you run it, it will be successful. That means that we have a DNS record. Now we just need to run responder. Minus I on turn zero. And if you wait five minutes in your responder, you should see that you capture Ted Graves password hash. And that's how we get Ted's password hash. So let's copy that. Stop responder here. This is the command that we had ran. And let's say, um, make the, uh, no, nano, hash dot text or hash yeah let's name it hash dot text and let's just paste it in here let's hope that we have the whole thing okay save now we just need to crack uh we're going to use john okay and roku dot text this shouldn't take too long but we'll pause here and come back once it's done okay so as you can see ted uh his password is, is mr teddy <laughs> so that's uh, a new credential that we have for here, let's go uh, to our Bloodhound and mark, mark Ted as owned as well. We might have to rerun Bloodhound, but let's see. Let's mark him as owned. Okay, now going back to our analysis, should it path to high value targets? What would that do? That's too much. Okay, uh, should it path from owned principles? And this time I want Ted. All right, Ted is a hit. So it looks like there is a computer that Ted has read G GRSA password. If you hover here, it will tell you how to abuse this. But I'm going to use a tool that was created by this person actually who created the box. The, by the person that created the box. As, as you can see, um, this tool, the usage is right there. Uh, it allows us to read those password blobs for users that can access and pass them. So I already cloned that repo and it's right here. And all we need to do is use the correct information and we should be fine. So the correct syntax is we give it the user Ted and the password and then the domain. And we should be able to see if we can read the password for that user. So just like we saw in blood down here that we have access to SVC INT, we now have here an NTLM hash. It looks like it's an NTLM hash. So what can we do with NTLM hashes? We can try to pass them around as well. And that's exactly what we're going to do. All right. So uh, through some research, I, I found this article abusing cables from Linux an overview of available tools. And from here, it actually teaches us how we can use an NTLM hash to forge uh, tickets or passwords sometimes. So here I'm going to use get stpy and see if I can uh, export or impersonate the administrator. If we go back to here uh, and look up TED, uh, actually node info under TED. Let's scroll down. He's allowed uh, to delegate as, as well. But I think the SVC is other information as well. Yeah, this one is also allowed to delegate. So let's see if we can use that exact information from the article to see if we can just use some tickets here. So I will try to impersonate 
administrator was that's what we're after and svc should also have more permissions okay so i'm running the tool against the ip address and this is the syntax that it wants you need to specify the spn then the hash of the user that we found the service account we need to impersonate the administrator using this account and if we run it no such directory that okay that's interesting never seen that before let's open a new tab and see if that goes away i'm, I'm wondering if there's a cached credential here so a new tab should fix that okay there we go so now we saved it in administrator cache so all we need to do is now is let's export that so you're now learning how to work with tickets so let's export the administrator cache and now that we have exported it we can try to sign in as administrator we can use um, wmi in this case or ps exec i like wmi and using wmi exec without a password let's go to as administrator and as you can see it seems to work you might run into issues when you run this command here about time you just need to fix at uh, the time so that it matches the machine otherwise here we should be able to go to the desktop okay now we can do a dir and here's a flag type the root dot text and we compromised it and i hope this doesn't make a lot of noise and it's accepted so thanks for being here and i hope to see you next time please remember to like and subscribe yes please subscribe